Hi, I'm Film Buff, and welcome to the fifth installment of my video review marathon on all the Spongebob specials. In case you're new here, here's what happened so far. The Karens are probably pissed. Unlike some pieces of Spongebob media. So, not a lot of stuff happened. This episode is about King Neptune's 500th birthday being held at the Krusty Krab. But he is depressed because his son couldn't be there, simply because of how rebellious he was on not embracing his god powers. And so, Neptune ended up locking him up in a tiny cage on a deserted island. Yeah, no wonder he's not there, you dick. Then Spongebob and Patrick free him, and Triton wreaks havoc on Bikini Bottom. This episode is just a whole lot of nothing. Barely anything of important notes happen in this episode, and Triton is just a forgettable character. It's just a normal teenage rebellious type of character. Only, he if he was a immortal he would be viewed as, like, a lovable son by a father. Like, he just wants to do normal mortal stuff, like play a game of baseball or cure all known diseases. Since Neptune's a god, he's like, hell, now nah, you, you're gonna treat your subjects like complete garbo. The jokes aren't that good, either. There's a running gag where Mr. Krabs just wants to make some money because uh, Neptune's having his birthday at the Krusty Krab. He doesn't end up making any money since Neptune doesn't eat any Krabby Patties. I honestly don't know what else I can say about this one. It's such a nothing episode, and I kind of forgot that I even saw it while I was making this video, to be honest. There's just nothing to it. It's just... God, that sucks. Not even in an entertaining way, like Atlantis Square Pandas or Truth or Square. Just a bland, standard, forgettable season six kind of way. See, season six was such a bland season. My God. <laughs> this episode is about Plankton building a super highway that will both go over the Krusty Krab and directly through jellyfish fields. Destroying the two things that SpongeBob loves the most. So naturally, Spongebob wants to put a stop to this. But everyone else in Bikini Bottom, with the exception of Patrick and Mr. Krabs, is like, Hell no, we want to keep this highway. It's going to be nice. Yeah, it took seven seasons, but Spongebob did a save the rainforest type of story. Oh, goody. This is fun. As we all know, environmental messages in animation are always so great. I want to talk about the songs real quick. The first song, the jellyfishing song, is literally just SpongeBob and Patrick saying jelly lily lily fish over and over and over again. Yeah, that's what you call a song, I guess. The second song is a parody of Give Peace a Chance, and not even a good one. Because with Give Peace a Chance, the things that rhymed all had to do with John Lennon's message of peace. Where in this song, it's just a bunch of random things that just so happen to rhyme. And let's not mention the fact that they took what should have been a simple environmental message and turned it into a plot about Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. Yeah, spoiler alert, the rest of the episodes in this video are about Plankton trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula. Uh, apparently, this was supposed to be the series finale to the show. Yeah, I don't know about you, but this is not a good finale. If I expect Spongebob to end, which I highly doubt that it ever will at this point. I expect that the show creators would end it off on the biggest, highest note the show has ever done. I doubt that it would ever end on an episode so bland and generic. 
the final episode of a show as legendary as Spongebob should be special. Not just a, a boring environmental message that doesn't even do a good job at being an environmental message. The episode is about Mr. Krabs putting the Krabby Patty secret formula in a secret location. But they forgot to look at it before they make a fresh batch of Krabby Patties, so Spud, Bob, and Patrick have to go on a, on a quest to find it. Meanwhile, Plankton is there, and he's trying to catch it. This episode was actually a lot of fun. I liked it way more than I thought I was going to. It had some decent mystery elements to it, and it was fun to see who did who and to put all the pieces together. Although it's pretty obvious that Plankton is the evil mastermind behind all of it. But, you know, it was still kind of nice to watch the mystery. It's kind of like Roger Rabbit. You don't really watch it because it's a good mystery. You like it because there are good characters and moments throughout the whole thing. My favorite part of the episode had to be towards the middle, where Spongebob loses his key to the bank which has the formula, so he and Patrick suspect people who he meet throughout the time, only to solve other crimes that everyone else has committed. That's great. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with this episode. I thought it would be another boring or dreadful one, but it ended up being really charming and it had a few bits that made me laugh. It's an episode that I don't mind revisiting every now and then. Is it the best one? No, but it's still pretty good. The episode is about a snow race in Bikini Bottom with a grand prize of $100,000. But it turns out that it's all just some crazy plan for playing to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. Because of course it is. Once Spongebob and the gang hear about it, they have to leave the race in order to get back to Bikini Bottom to save the secret formula while escaping a giant snow monster and the freezing cold. So if the race was just a facade, then what happened to all the other racers? Did they just arrive at the finish line and see that there was no prize? Or did they just bail on the race and get got lost like Spongebob and it, all of them did? So, yeah, Spongebob and, and the gang all got lost track while they were racing. And, and they eventually find a snow monster, and they have to get back to the cut the crap. And let's talk about the snow monster for a minute. Apparently, this snow monster, done in claymation, which means it's very distinct from the rest of the episode. And Mr. Krabs was familiar with this from when he was in the Navy. The snow monster isn't really in the episode a whole lot. It's mostly pointless, except when it comes back at the very, very end, where apparently it didn't want to eat them. It just wanted to eat Patrick's jelly beans. And it mistakes plankton for a jelly bean, and it eats plankton. There's also this running gag where Squidward keeps getting stuck in ice and becomes frozen, which more Squidward suffering. Yay. This episode is not, not very good. If you want a winter-themed Spongebob episode that isn't necessarily a Christmas episode, might I recommend Survival of the Idiots and The Snowball Effect. Those are really good episodes and much better than Frozen Face Off. My god. Mm. So yeah, get those episodes a look. It'll be the same amount of runtime. It's on the Christmas DVDs, season two and three DVDs, CBS All Access, oh, Paramount Plus now, probably. Still, oh. Just go watch those episodes instead. This episode's boring. That's the thing about most of these episodes, they're boring. Not very entertaining. I mean, the animation's fine, I guess. I mean, the animation's fine in all these, but. Oh my god, I get... This is probably the most boring. Movie Marathon Madness part for the Spongebob specials. I think I've done so far. Just, my god. These episodes were insultingly boring and uninteresting. I guess it's slightly better than Clash of Triton and, and Spongebob's Last Stand. But 
the great Patty Caper was so much better than this, but oh my god, I need to stop. Yeah, so not a lot of good ones this time around. But don't worry, the SpongeBob action will continue next month. Hopefully, it will be a lot more better because March 2021 will be the third annual SpongeBob month. In 2019, I started SpongeBob month in, in honor of the 20th anniversary of the franchise. And I've done it every year since. Not always in the same month. Thanks, COVID. But this March, I will continue my SpongeBob Month tradition. And this time, celebrating the release date of the third SpongeBob movie in America. And the release date of the brand new SpongeBob spinoff series, Camp Coral SpongeBob's Underyear. Both will be dropped on Paramount Plus on March 4th. So... Even though if those projects might not be very good, it's still a very interesting time to be a Spongebob fan. So, I will continue my tradition for Spongebob Month this March. It's weird. It, it feels like I just did Spongebob Month 2020. Again, thanks, COVID. What to expect from Spongebob Month 2021? Same thing as last year's, probably. Each episode will probably be a little different than the last. You'll definitely get, you'll you will definitely get another creepy pasta, and for sure another installment of Movie Marathon Madness, the SpongeBob specials. But I think I might want to try something a little different this month, similar to what I did last year with that weird little interview thing. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that will be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of when the video will be uploaded. And what was your favorite episode that I covered here today? Because my personal one was The Great Patty Caper. But tell me if you guys enjoyed any of these episodes. I would love to know. We're over halfway done, and I'm very excited. Anyway, guys, I will see you later. Bye. Someday right here. Wait a minute. They made it. It's time.